welcome to my channel. This is Kristen and today we are making a lemon granny square. So I'll be using a braided cotton cord, but I'll be using a different brand than I usually feature on the channel. So this is the two millimeter braided cotton cord from the brand Perfect Yarns. And I've been loving it so far. It's slightly smaller than the bobany cord that I use, but it's still very great quality. So as you can see, it's nice, has a lot of movement to it, and it's soft. So you don't have to worry about it being too tough to work with when you're crocheting. It has a lot of movement and give to it, and it's perfect for bags. So I have a yellow color here, and then also the cream. Uh, the hook that we'll be using today is the a five millimeter hook. So if you're choosing to use this cord, use five millimeter. If you're using the Bobini three millimeter cord, I would highly suggest using a six millimeter hook. Of course, you'll need a pair of scissors and also a tapestry needle. And so all of the materials will be linked in the description box below. Um, so you'll be able to find them easily. I have also listed the yardage amounts on the screen here for your reference. This is the amount you'll need for one square. Make sure to check out the description box as it contains useful information such as the materials list and links to the written pattern. So with round one, we'll start off with color A, which in this case is the cream color. You will make a magic circle and chain one. And this chain one counts as the first stitch for this round. Now you will make 15 single crochet stitches into the magic circle that you created. And then once you get to the end, you will close your round with a slip stitch. I'm checking to make sure I have the right amount of stitches. So 15 single crochet stitches and the chain one from the beginning, which counts as our 16th stitch. And then I'm closing the round with a slip stitch. And so from here, we'll want to close that center circle. And we'll do this by grabbing the tail that we left at the beginning and gently pulling it until the circle closes up. Be careful here because you can break the cord and then you'll have to start over so just gently tug at it until it cinches close so here's what the back of it is looking like and now we have our beginning tail we're gonna leave that out because we may need to pull it again as we're working if that center circle comes a loose and then we can weave the tail later so now we're ready for round two so as you notice, I am not cutting the cord from color A, and that's because we'll be working continuously with both colors until we get to round six. So you'll attach color B, which is the yellow, in the stitch that is directly next to the loop that we left from the first round. And so insert your hook into that stitch and pull a loop using color B through your stitch. And then you will secure it to your work by chaining two. Make your tail about an inch and a half and that'll make it a lot easier to weave the ends um, as you're working. So once you've made your chain two, we'll begin working round two. So first you'll need to place two more stitches into the stitch we just worked. And also as you're working, I'm going to be crocheting around that beginning tail to help weave my end as I go. So here's the first half double crochet stitch and then the second. And notice that they're both into the same stitch that we placed our chain to from the beginning. And then here I'm showing you what it looks like from the back and how I'm working around that beginning tail so I can hide it as I go. This is all a personal preference. Um, you can always do this at the end, but I like to weave my ends as I go. And so now we'll skip the next stitch and we'll work into the following stitch. And in that stitch, you'll place three half double crochet stitches. 
And again, notice I am making sure that I am holding that beginning tail against the work so I can crochet around it as I go. And so you'll continue in this pattern, skipping the next stitch and then working into the following stitch, placing three half, half double crochets into that stitch until you get to the end. And once you get to the end, you should have a total of eight clusters of three half double crochet stitches. And now you will close the round by slip stitching to the top of the chain two from the beginning of the round. And now you're all done with round two. Before we begin round three, I wanted to show you that the loop and the working cord for color A are on the back side of your work. And don't worry about that. We're actually going to pull it through and it's very simple. We're also going to position the working cord for color B to the front side of our work and set it aside. We just want to make sure that we don't get it caught up under color A um, as we'll need it in a specific position for round four. I know, it's a mouthful. Cord management is key when you're working this type of, with this type of technique. So just don't get frustrated if you don't get it the first few times. You may have to take a few rows out here or there, but um, I promise you, you will get it. So I pulled my cord through and I'm gonna start off uh, round three by making an extended chain one. And what you can do to help you is just position your hook to the top of your work. And then that's the height that you want that loop to be. So once I get the height that I want, I can yarn over and complete that chain one. Next, you will chain three, making sure not to make them too tight. And then you will place a single crochet stitch into the first skip stitch from round two. So you will chain three and then single crochet into the next skip space all the way around. You'll repeat this a total of six more times and then you should have one more wedge left. And behind this wedge, we will chain three and then close the round with a slip stitch to the top of the chain one from the beginning. So we've made it to round four, and as you can see, our working cord for color B is positioned in front of our work just as we wanted. And then here's the chain that we made in the previous round. So we're gonna start off by taking color B and chaining two. And this chain two will be our first half double crochet stitch of the round. In the next stitch, you will place two half double crochet stitches making sure to only work into the yellow stitches, which are those stitches we created in round two. We will make sure to be careful to not crochet around that chain three that we created in round three. I know, again, it sounds more confusing than it really is. We're just making sure that we only crochet into those yellow stitches. So we have our chain two, our two half double crochet stitches, and then another half double crochet stitch. And as you can see from the back, they are not attached to the chain three. We, they are positioned in front of the chain three. So now we will chain one and then we'll move on to the next wedge. And so in the first one, we will place a half double crochet stitch. In the next one, two half double crochet stitches. 
and in the final one a another half double crochet stitch and you're going to repeat this all the way around for each wedge until you get to the very end Before finishing off this round, we want to position our color A forward, bring that loop to the front so it can be ready for round five. And then taking your color B, you'll chain one and then close off the round with a slip stitch to the top of that chain two from the beginning. And now you've completed round four. And if you look at the back of your work, you'll know that you've done it correctly because all of the chain three spaces should be completely visible and not covered by any of your stitches from round four. This is important because we'll be working into these stitches for round five. Taking your working cord for color A, you'll chain one and then you'll make one half double crochet stitch into the same space. and then kind of pushing that yellow loop to the side. It's okay, uh, we will reposition this once we get to round six, but for now I'm just tucking it out of my way. And now we're gonna be working into that chain three that's on the back side of our work. And so, as you can see, it's not attached to round four. And that is exactly how we'd like it. We're going to insert our hook behind that chain and work our half double crochet stitches into the chain. You can work completely around it. And what I want you to do is place four half double crochet stitches around this chain. So I'm showing you a close up here so you can see that the stitches are only worked onto that chain three and they are not attached to the yellow stitches from round four. And this is what it looks like from the back. And so now what you'll do is place two half double crochet stitches into that single crochet stitch from round three. One, and two. And then once again, Looking at the back of your work, you're going to place four half double crochet stitches around that chain three. And so you'll repeat this all the way around until you get to the end. So I'm gonna speed through that and then I'll come back to show you how to close off round five. Once you complete your final four half double crochet stitches, you will close the round by slip stitching to the top of the chain one from the beginning. So round five is complete and we're looking good so far. Here is the back and as you can see, it's pretty neat. We have our working cords from for colors A and B and then our beginning tail for color A. Before we get into round six, I did want to share a tip with you. If you are not using your color A as your border color, which would be round seven, 
You can actually cut the cord here for color A and weave your ends, finish it off and weave your ends. I will be using color A as my border color in round seven, so right now I am not cutting that cord. So to work round six, you will be working with color B. And what we're gonna do is pull that loop forward through the center of our stitch here that it's positioned behind. And then we're gonna chain one. For round six, all of our stitches are going to be worked in the back loop only. And you're gonna single crochet in the back loop only all the way around. So as you can see, I am taking my hook and instead of inserting it underneath the entire top of the stitch, I'm inserting it through the center and working around that back loop. And so this is the easiest round for this granny square. So I'm gonna speed through and then meet you at the end to show you how to finish it off. So as I'm coming to the end of this round, I'm going to place a stitch into the back loop of the stitch that is that contains our loop and in theory that should have been the last stitch of this round but because I actually started uh, my, my chain one I place it one stitch too far to the left I'm actually gonna go behind and crochet into the stitch that I accidentally skipped from the beginning so if you did your <laughs> your chain one in the beginning correctly you wouldn't have this extra stitch to work into, um, but I had accidentally skipped it. But as you can see, we have all of our single crochet stitches at this point. You should have a total of 48 stitches. You can cut your cord here, and now we will finish off this round with an invisible closure. It's similar to the invisible join that I've shared in other tutorials. You'll simply take your end tail and you'll pull it through the second stitch of the round from front to back. And then you'll insert your hook through the center of the last stitch that you just worked and pull the end tail through the top into the center towards the back. And as you can see, the closure we've created looks just like the tops of the other stitches in our round. And then all you have to do now is weave that ending tail. We've completed the lemon portion of our granny square and now we will move on to the border. Okay, so now we're ready for round seven. And I did wanna mention that I ended up cutting the cord for color A. Um, I wanted to show those of you who are attaching a different color for your border color how to do that. So um, that is what we're doing here. If you did not cut your cord, you can just chain two and follow the instructions from there. And so for this round, we'll be working in the third loop only. Each stitch has a front loop, a back loop, and the pumps on the back of your stitch are the third loop. So I'm gonna take my hook here and just insert it behind so you can get a better view of it. And as you notice, it pushes our front and back loops forward and creates this really nice braided detail. So taking your color for your border, Attach that by pulling up a loop and then chaining two, and it doesn't matter where you attach it to your circle. And now we'll begin to work our border pattern, and I put it over here to the left too so you can follow along a little easier. First, we'll start off by placing a half double crochet stitch into the next three stitches. And then you'll follow that up by placing one double crochet stitch into the next two stitches. And notice that as I'm working, I'm crocheting around that tail to weave it in as I go. So once you've completed those stitches, now you've made it to our first corner stitch. In your corner stitch, you'll place two double crochets followed by a chain one, and then finally two double crochets all in the same stitch. So first I'm working one double crochet stitch, 
Then another double crochet stitch, chain one, double crochet, and then double crochet again. And that was all worked in that same stitch and it creates our corner. And so as you can see, we've turned and our work is starting to go in the other direction and it's starting to form our square, which is what we want. With our first corner complete, now we can move forward to our first full side. But before we do that, I do wanna show you that so far we've only completed half of one of those sides and that's only because I started in the center of that side, which is a design preference. And so now we will start off by placing one double crochet stitch into the next two stitches, followed by placing one half double crochet stitch into the next seven stitches. And then once you completed those seven, now you will place one double crochet stitch into the next two stitches. And now we've made it to our next corner. And so once again, you're going to place two double crochet stitches, a chain one, and then two more double crochet stitches all into that same chain. Once you've completed this corner, we will repeat the instructions for side stitches and the corner stitches two more times. I'm gonna speed through that part and come back once I have completed that last corner. Pause the video and use the diagram to the left to work those stitches. So once you've completed the last corner, you will place one double crochet stitch into the next two stitches, followed by one half double crochet stitch in the next three stitches and then you will finish off the round with an invisible closure. So you'll need to cut your cord at this point and then finish off your round. If you'd like to add a second round to your border, instead of cutting your cord here, join the round with a slip stitch, chain two, and then continue working around until your border is your preferred I'm not working a second round for my border so I'm going to cut my cord here and then finish off with an invisible join. I'm going to show you that again and then also weave my ends. Now we're done with our square, but we are not done with our project. And so, granny squares of course are used as building blocks for bigger projects. They can be anything from bags, dresses, hats, you name it. I plan to use this square to create a bag. And so in the next few clips, I'm gonna show you two of my preferred joining techniques. Uh, one is the slip stitch technique and one is the join as you go. There are multiple other options outside of those two, but those are just two of my favorites. The first technique I'm demonstrating is the slip stitch to join. 
And so if I'm going to use two squares, but you can use this for however many squares you have for your project. I plan on connecting the squares from my back with the cream color, but to make it easier for you all to see, I'm going to use this contrasted color, this pink, and it'll make it a lot easier uh, to see the stitches from the join in comparison to the stitches from the squares. So I'm lining up my squares here and then I'm looking for the point where I want to start my, uh, my join. And so from here, I plan to start in the corners, which are those chain one spaces from our corner stitches. So I like to work from right to left. So I'll take my hook and insert it through the center of the chain one on the right square, and then into the center of the chain one from the left square. To connect your cord, pull up a loop through your right and left stitches, leaving a tail of about two inches. And then you'll begin to slip stitch everything together. So make sure your stitches are lined up from both of your squares. And then working from right to left, you'll insert your hook into the right stitch and then into the left stitch before you make a slip stitch. So as you can see, I have my stitches lined up here and I'll be working from right to left all the way down. So I'm inserting my hook through the center of the stitch on the right. And then again on this, the center of the stitch on the left, yarning over, and then I'm pulling the loop through all three loops on my hook. And then I'm repeating it again. Insert it to the right stitch and the left stitch, yarn over and then pull up a loop through all three loops on my hook. And then I'm gonna continue this all the way down until I get to the end. And I'll know that I did it correctly if once I get to the end of that side, there are no more stitches remaining. If you do have an extra stitch on either side, that means you skipped a stitch on the opposite side and you'll need to rip that back until you figure out where you skipped the stitch. So as you can see, this is a fairly simple technique, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy using it. Another benefit of using this option is that you can create all of your granny squares in advance and connect them later. And finally, it's a great option if you'd like to add a pop of color to your final design. So I wanna quickly show you what the back of our work looks like. And as you can see, it is very neat, very subtle, and would make a nice discreet um, join um, if you choose to use this option. And so now we'll move on to our next technique, which is join as you go. So I'm using the same squares here. I just took part of the side of one of our squares loose, just so I can show you this technique. And so just as with our previous technique, you wanna make sure that you get your squares lined up to how you want them to be connected. Now I will be joining my squares starting with the chain one space in each of the corner stitches. And so as you can see here, I've worked the first two double crochet stitches from the corner. And now I'm going to join to the chain one stitch. So first insert your hook behind the chain one stitch from the right square, pull up a loop from your left square, and then chain one. And that is our first connecting point between our two squares. And now continuing on, all of the stitches that we make on the left will mirror all of our stitches on the right. Pull your working loop through the stitch on the right square first before working the matching stitch on the left square. And so this should make it easy for you. You'll know what stitches to do next because you wanna make sure that all of your stitches on the left match your stitches on the right. Continue on, I pull my working loop through the stitch on the right first before working the stitch on the left. And I'll continue doing this all the way to the end. And just to show you really quickly what the join is looking like so far, as you can see, it's creating a fun little twisted seam. It's really pretty and it also lays flat just like our slip stitch. Um, the only difference is it is going to be the color of your border stitch. So keep that in mind. You won't have the option to do like a contrasting color here unless you're doing your borders for all of your squares in different colors. So I'm going to speed through this part and then come back once we get to the end.
So we've completed our join here. And once you've completed connecting the sides that you want to connect, you would then continue working your stitches as normal. So if you had squares on all sides, you would, instead of working them as normal, you would continue with the join as you go method. Um, I will say this takes a little bit more practice getting used to and you either love it or you don't. But I would highly suggest at least giving this technique a try at least once so you could at least say that you gave it a try and you know for sure whether or not you like it or you don't. But it's always a great option to have in your toolkit. I'm going to finish off this square and then continue making lemon granny squares because I'm making a large tote bag using my lemon squeeze tote bag pattern. If you're interested in making this bag, you can purchase the red pattern from one of the links in the description box below. Now, on the next few clips, I will show you an example of a bag that I've already completed, which is a smaller version of the Lemon Squeeze Tote. And then I'll also show you some possible configurations that you can use to create a tote of your own. Here's an example of a smaller version of the Lemon Squeeze Tote. And this bag is made up of 14 squares. And then here are two examples of some other configurations you could use. You can make one with 13 squares or 27 squares. It is absolutely ginormous. But let me know in the comments below, which one would you make? And what colors would you choose? And that concludes today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.